Hello and welcome to Painless Universal, a conversation with me, Anne Welsh. Today's guest is very, she's an aspiring lady. She is a dentist. And when we say dentist, there's so many dentists around the world, but what inspires me with um, this, my special guest is her, what she does about creating the perfect smile. We all been known that your smile is what gets the door open. She restores and she, you know, restructures the way we look and feel, all to do with our perfect smile. I'm glad she's joining me with um, taking time out of her busy schedule, especially as you know, the dental surgery is just open and people are overwhelmed with their bookings. But she's taking time out to just join me on this platform today. Meet Dr. Camilla. Hello everyone, welcome again to Painless Universal Conversation with myself, Anne Welsh. Um, as you heard from my introduction, I've got the gorgeous Dr. Camilla here with me. And doctor, thank you so much for joining me on this platform. Before I get started, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you? Of course, thank you so much, Anne, for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to genuinely seeing you and to be talking to you, especially on such a sensitive topic. Yeah. I'm a and I have over 14 years of experience in private dental clinics all across the world at the moment. <laughs> so um, um, it's, it's, it's such an easy question, who are you? And so difficult to answer. <laughs> yeah, so um, I have two kids. I have a gorgeous family. Um, I have six-year-old and a um, year and a half to two-year-old boy who is asleep at the moment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm kind of a um, busy mom trying to combine work and family uh, together. Wow. And <clears throat> no, no, absolutely. That's, I, I, you know, people see how hard, how hard working you are. And I was going on your website and I see all the blog, you even write blogs, you do your daily work and we forget that you're also a full-time mommy as well, you know, managing a household. Not very easy, but what led you to just go on this journey to become a dentist? Um, you know, it's um, medicine just runs in our blood. I come from the quite a renowned family of doctors from back home. I, I grew up and I was born in Azerbaijan, in Baku. And um, my granddad, it all started with him. He um, kind of he, uh, set up the first neurosurgical hospital, like central, very big hospital back home. And since then, everybody in our family <laughs> decided to become doctors. My mom, my sisters, my uncles. Uh, we have all sorts of medical specialties uh, in our house. And as I was growing up, um, I was always a little bit more mischievous. <laughs> I was trying to deviate from the main pattern. Yeah. And to me, um, dentistry was a completely new area because we, don't ha we didn't have any dentists in our family back then. And uh, I decided that it's something interesting for me to do. Mm. Also, um, with me, I've, I'm, I'm Vigro. I don't know if you believe in horoscopes, but mm. yeah. <laughs> I like to, I like everything looking nice, kind of. I like, I have always been into a bit of architecture, a little bit of design, kind of putting things together nicely. And um, I remember one day my mom, she had her smile done she had her teeth done it was it was in early 90s and back then it was such a rare thing but i remember it completely transformed her personality she would come home so happy she was smiling all the time she was like so happy with her new teeth and it just had such an effect on me i realized that she suddenly looked younger and i realized you can actually you know you can actually transform somebody's life by giving them beautiful smile and kind of boost their confidence and 
since then I decided that this is definitely something I'd like to do. There's just too many people who can feel great. Um, and uh, since I had no big choice, it was medicine for me. <laughs> I, prefer, I prefer to do, um, I, I, I kind of chose dentistry myself, went into that. Yeah, my dad was very happy with that when I had this discussion with him, what, what, what we're going to choose, where we're going to go. Um, yeah, uh, although it was a completely new area, like it was completely unexplored um, area for no idea where it's going to work, how it's going to happen, um, how it works at all. I only knew that, you know, the smile could look nice. <laughs> well, that's a, a, that's a good insight because that also brings me to the journey of your you, you know, no one in your family yet, yeah, you had medical doctors and everyone was in the medical field, but the specific field of being a dentistry was not known in your family or no one has done it. What pains and challenges did you go along the way to get yourself to where you are today? Because let's be honest, you're really quite a successful dentist in London. So it, it, there must be, has been some um, journey along the ways that you went through. Yeah, and you name it, there's been so many <laughs> where to start from. Well, to um, be honest, um, all my life, I'm, I'm such a character, I always wanted uh, to, I'm kind of a neurotic, you know, I always want to get things done quickly, to be the first one here, to manage everything at the same time. And it was the same since I was a little, and even at school, I tried to jump over classes by passing exams, just because I wanted to graduate quicker, to get into work quicker. And... Um, I graduated from medical university when I was 21 year old, which is very early. Everybody would graduate 22, 23. Um, and all that effort I've, I've put in order to be able to kind of quickly work, you know. Even at university, I was um, from day one, I was going to, after university, I would go to assist, do some dental assisting jobs. Um, I would come home very late every day. And uh, that, all that was because I wanted to have this clinical background together with the theoretical knowledge. So when I graduate, I don't waste time on learning all that. So kind of, you know, I was trying to do everything quickly. And then um, I also uh, was very lucky to, I was very lucky across the, my pattern, path, I, I have to admit. Uh, I don't believe in such thing as luck, but I think if you're really showing a lot of effort, if you're really kind of... Um, confident you're trying hard to do your best at each step people see it around and there is no way um, that would go unnoticed so what happened with me is i got a really great job in central like one of the most prestigious hospitals back home i also set up my own clinic one year later after i graduated and uh, i was really like successful working for several years there and then i met my husband <laughs> and when I met my husband, we decided we will relocate to London because he was in the U.S. Mm. And um, whatever he was doing there just was non-existing back home. So the only area where we could live both of us was London. And when I came here, I first faced my hardest challenge ever. <laughs> so I had to kind of do all the studies, do all the exams from scratch. So all my life I was kind of, you know, um, rushing towards getting things done quickly and just getting to as, um, as kind of forward as I could. But um, then here I was completely stuck when I arrived because our uh, license, you probably know medical doctors, think we cannot mm. work we want. if we relocate, we have to redo the whole thing. So when I came here, um, the challenge was real. So first I thought, okay, it's just exam. I'm sure I'll pass it. But uh, then I realized it was um, not so easy because... First of all, it was an exam where you pass all the medical school, like six years, which you study, you do in one go, which is very low success rate of these exams. And also that there was a massive waiting list for those exams as well. Uh, a lot of doctors from big, massive experience from all across the world, from Latin America, from Africa countries, from uh, Pakistan, India, you name it. Wow. Everyone was trying to come, whoever needed to come for family circumstances, everyone was trying to pass these exams. So I realized there's a wait list to get to exam before you even try to pass it. And uh, anyway, when I just arrived, the wait list was one year. I said, okay, I'll wait for one year. I have decided that instead of just waiting, I will do master's degree, I'll do this and that, which I was busy with. But then it hit me again one year later, I sat and finally I could kind of book the exam. 
me and my husband we sat together we were trying to book it and uh, we couldn't because it was first come first serve and there was thousands of people and only 100 places so we booked it and we couldn't and two weeks later they said that the exams have stopped and we don't know whether they're going to be happening again anytime soon so <laughs> Yeah, for me, it was a big, big, it was the lowest point, I must say. Um, I was just uh, devastated because, first of all, I wasted so much time. And second, I couldn't see myself. Uh, we were discussing with my husband whether I should do some master's in MBA, some, some kind of other things, some financial background, do like, you know, just change my specialty. But uh, to me, it was an impossible thing because I've been coming to this for all my life, you know. <laughs> And um, this was the only thing I, I could imagine myself doing. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I remember it was like a very like bad day when I found out about it. Mm. So I spent a few weeks thinking what to do with it uh, mm. because I could have waited, but then you don't know what you're waiting for. You don't know whether they said there are going to be may not be exams in several years, which means I wouldn't be able to practice dentistry. And then dentistry is such such thing if you don't practice it you kind of get outdated i don't know like it's just it's not yeah, yeah so um i'm even getting nervous talking about it because it's like it was so much stress um it's just no, oh my it's so it's so inspiring to know and hear these stories because everyone sees you sees how successful you become but not knowing the challenges you went along really? please keep going it's really i love it. it's never very, talked about because when you invited me for this for this program, I, I was thinking about other other things, you know, kind of family stresses and to discuss. But then you're asking me about this, and uh, this I've never discussed with anyone because um, it's not the best part of my life. I want to discuss with this is a very stressful part. And uh, imagine I was sitting there for a few years just waiting for something to happen, which I didn't. Even you know. No, what's fascinating? You started life happening or not? Sorry. Hello. Yes, I can hear you now. Sorry, I, I was missing your voice. Yes, and I said, what's fascinating, you started your life very fast. And all of a sudden, you had this break. And I think people don't realize that about life, that sometimes you're very, very, very fast in getting to where you need to get to, but this is, you never know when the break will come in your life. Mine came earlier on. Earlier on, you're saying about graduation, you graduated early. I graduated when I was 24, <laughs> you see. Yeah. So I had my own downturn then. But keep sharing their story because that is so inspirational and that is what makes a difference. That is what takes people from just wanting but actually believing that even though you go through challenging times, there's still hope. Yeah, absolutely. I will be honest. Um, I have to admit at this point, it was so important to have a lot of support because these are the times when you literally wake up every day at the peak of your career. I have my own clinic back home. Mm -hmm. I had, like, I've left a very good position at the hospital. I was really like getting, I wouldn't say I was at the peak of the career, but everything was going so nice for me. I, I, I wanted, and all of a sudden I'm here just doing nothing. I wake up in London, okay, it's a beautiful city, but uh, you know, you have thing to do i'm not kind of person who wants to have coffee all day long, you, know? you want to have something going yeah yes and i again i'm not uh, so um kind of um I, i'm not the kind of person who would open my own brand or design i was never into all that i want i knew exactly what i wanted to do i was going towards it all my life as you correctly said that, that i was always kind of fast forwarding things and i found myself having this unwanted break right in the middle of my and um, the problem was, if you know it's just a break, you're kind of relaxed. But I had no idea where I'm going to be in a year's time, you know. So, um, but what I decided, so anyway, it was very, very depressing few few weeks of my time, life. And then what I decided one day when I woke up is, I, know, no, I, I even applied to some uh, accounting courses to some places where I thought I would find a temporary job just to do something. But then, um, I don't know, one day I decided that, um, I actually not, I'm not gonna just, you know, kind of, I'm gonna just wait because I was uh, kind of sure that this is exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, I decided I'm gonna do some postgraduate degrees. Um, I've done really good masters for at restorative dentistry at Queen Mary. Meanwhile, while I was waiting for this whole thing. 
And then, uh, obviously, simultaneously, I was applying regularly to all these exams. And three times I failed. And it was only once a year. Mm-hmm. And every time I wouldn't be able just to book the exam. Yeah. <laughs> it was so devastating for me. Because, um, and then I found out later that the whole system was people would ask their relatives to sit in front of the computers and uh, book at the same time, increasing their chances to book. I was alone with my husband in London. I had no who I could ask. And I had friends, so I just gathered all my friends. Thank God I had a lot. <laughs> I just asked them to do. And that time I've passed. I kind of managed to do it. But before I did it, I wasted three years. For two and a half years, well, uh, of my life, just kind of, and I wasn't, I couldn't just sit because I, the minute I book, I need to go and pass the exam. So I was literally reviewing and doing the revision of all the six years of medical school <laughs> every single day, wow. like we yeah, did, and I wouldn't sleep all nights. I wouldn't because it's a huge material. It's not just theory; it's practice. It's clinical. I both. Everyone was making love of at me. I bought this mannequin whose teeth I could just really practice on. And I had him in my bedroom. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, a lot, of, um, a lot of funny moments as well there. But um, long story short, um, obviously I passed from the first attempt, thank God, because I, not passing was not an option there. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just my, you know, it's just I have only one shot and I have to make it happen. Um, but I have to say, um, it's very, very difficult, difficult in terms of also for me, because I, English is not my uh, first or second or even third language. And for me, I didn't study in English. Mm. So for, uh, obviously, I knew I love my dentistry and medicine, but to do the same terminology and everything in English and to do it on my own, uh, sort of going to library, it was, <laughs> it was quite. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for me, I just, I remember that day specifically when I woke up and I realized that, you know what, I'm not, I mean, that I only have one option. There are no more options. I just have to keep studying until I can do it. Yeah. And you will not believe it, Anne, but since after, uh, like, after then, a lot of people would approach me and think that I was crazy. I was just sitting studying for not God knows what. Like, there was no exam to study. <laughs> every so how, did you, how did you transform how did you get your stabilized and get your find your feet from that trauma of going to it, settle into the uk because i know a lot of people going through that but how did you stabilize and find your feet it, it was you know i'm very um concentrated when it's needed you know i quite you know relaxing but when it's needed i can't pull myself together and i remember that i knew that it was that those few years when i was kind of um always on my tiptoes you know i would never relax every day i would just wake up i was trying to organize myself because you know when you go don't go to work when you don't go to to university you, you don't you don't do it much you it's hard to have a structure it's hard to sort of sit and start on your own when you don't have when we are in university, we have professors we, we can approach, we, can, we have teachers, we have this and that. And also for me, having several years of de- clinical experience to go back to dental school, to go back to all these materials, um, it was really difficult. It was really difficult. And well, thank God I had a big support of my husband. And um, I must say, if not for him, I probably wouldn't even attempt to do that because it's just those difficult days i i cried i was going crazy <laughs> yeah yeah but i didn't know like like what i need to do for it you know so um but um yeah i remember i was so over prepared that i took because i was doing this so for so long and there was no exam one day it was just before the final day when i booked the examination um just week before i took this revision course and the prof- the examiners at the uni- this is a ucl um uh, university where we had this revision course the professor couldn't believe his eyes like you are over prepared <laughs> why did you study so much you know because I I, I, I I couldn't explain to him because I was doing it for three years every day. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, you can't remember that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wow. Just, uh, yeah, and then when I passed, I will be honest, um, 
a lot of people cannot pass, but when they pass, there is even more difficulty they face with finding a job. Because to find a like kind of job in London, it's for dentists, it's very competitive. It's, um, it's really hard. And again, I'm, I don't know if it's luck or, I, again, as I said, I don't believe in luck. I do think that what happened is why I was waiting for uh, examinations to happen. I didn't just sit there. Like, I had a plan. So what I did is every day I rode down all the dental clinics round where I live. And I live in Kensington where there are loads, loads of dental clinics. I would just go there and I would offer help to work for them free of charge. I would just say I would do some assisting job just to be in the clinic so I don't forget things. <laughs> so I know what's going on. And um, one of the clin- obviously I had a few bad experiences where um, I wasn't really happy with um, how they would, you know, because they, once they find out that you are from Azerbaijan and you have no license to work, mm. it's changed kind of, you know, people don't uh, really relate to you in a certain way. And then uh, I finally found like really good clinic where um, the guy who was the owner, he actually was he really liked the way I worked and he gave me a lot of things to do during the day. So I was going there like I'm going to work every day and it gave me a lot of help because then I could see clinically what is required from a dentist in the UK because requirements here is the hardest bit. Everyone knows, I mean, all dentists are good dentists. Everyone knows how to do decay, how to treat this or that, but how to talk to patients, how to present the plan, what to present, what is best for them, what is, you know, uh, I've got a really great experience um, just from that position when I was working. And uh, because of that, when I passed the exam, just a few months later, I easily found a job in the private clinic in central London, very prestigious place. And I work there up until now because I'm really, really happy there. Mm, Yeah. No, because um, that's really amazing that you went on this journey. But there's one thing that you keep emphasizing. It's just not luck, but I can see there's a lot of hard work along the way. And which is something I really look up. uh, I love the the way you've really emphasized that point because a lot of people just think, okay, I'll do it and hopefully I'll get the luck. But I think it's really 99% of hard work and then the rest is you, the universe has to sort it out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the quick, quick um, thing is that you, in your line of doing this work, how do you define the perfect smile? Because well, uh, you're focusing on the restoration of the teeth and everything. How do you define that? What, 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 what do you look out for in a perfect smile? <laughs> well, the perfect smile, well, there's no, no such thing as perfect smile, I must admit. The perfect smile is, to me, it's something that makes you confident, that makes you feel good. Yeah. For you, yellow teeth, crooked teeth, but you feel so great with them that you can go out there, you can smile on the pictures, you're literally proud of your smile. And you have no idea, I see these transformations daily, how patient comes to me very um, unhappy, sort of, you know, sort of feeling not there you know something is missing and then when we do any treatment we discuss carefully we I, I, last thing we need is to do something which patient doesn't need really you know yes. mm. don't, what is perfect for you specifically because we are all different and and oftentimes what patient likes i don't like but uh, i kind of we have to find this common ground which is okay to do and she's happy and patient is happy and um, when patient gets it, it's such a transformation. It literally walks straight, you know, <laughs> like it's completely different, different um, personality. Because smile is one of the first thing you notice when you look at a person, at his, you know, outlook. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And in light of COVID nineteen, how have that affected you? And have you had to restructure the business in any kind of way? And uh, to be honest with you, after I had this hit in my career, it was long ago though, it's been now over 10 years that I'm uh, practicing, I have like long experience and all. But after what happened to me in the beginning, if mid, in mid-20s, um, I never take things for granted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. 
just it's just with me all the time. I, it never leaves me this feeling of you know you have it today and you have to be thankful. You don't know what you're gonna have tomorrow. Therefore, when COVID happened, it actually didn't really affect me as much personally. It's strange, but I was kind of enjoying it because also before that break in my career and after the past 10 years, I was working like crazy. I was doing courses. I was uh, doing conferences. Um, I was having kids. <laughs> I was just, you know, it was just get, getting so hectic. I think you would agree that the life um, has become so kind of in such a rush. It's yeah. like we rush every day. We rush to work. We rush back. We rush to get this coffee. Um, you know, to, to, to buy this, to travel somewhere. But um, I think the actual holiday is when not when you really travel, it's when you just relaxed. Mm. And I think it got me to this relaxed mood at home when <laughs> I finally got to spend two months with my family. My kids were really happy to see me at home. And um, yeah, I got to see a lot of things which I probably would have missed if I was elsewhere working. Mm really thankful for this time i think we, we, we all need it once in two years or so <laughs> yes, I think so i think we needed this time up but um on a final question um you your your positivity your sense of humor has really shown in your in your work your work is amazing you transform small but so many people out there who are in similar position like yourself because of a marriage or because of any situation had to change location, countries, to come over to a new location, start afresh, have kids, manage. What would be your final message of optimism or hope to these other people going through, who are going, currently going through a similar situation, trying to be where you are, but just don't know where the, what the standards are? Yeah, I think um, it's really good uh, kind of point you're making here. There are loads of loads of people, and I faced all of them when I was going through this. I met with a lot of them, and uh, I've also met some sad stories where people would just give up because they kind of I understand because even financially, not everyone can be sitting at home for four years, you know, in a row. But um, I think what's important to I think the reason they would give up mostly is because um, um, because no one likes to fail, you know, we, we, we like to succeed as individuals, as people, we like to get things done nicely, we like to kind of do the best we can. Um, I think it's sort of ingrained in us, and when we see, the, see the, the, the problem, the difficulty or the failure, then it's easy to change the course. So I think um, what, we, what is important to do is to understand that, in my case, it was really helpful to sort of and, and build, to understand that failure will happen, that you will fail at some point here and there in your life. You cannot just, you're not a robot and uh, you cannot always succeed. And the, the point is when this failure happens, just keep being, just keep being and uh, moving in your course, you know. The sooner you realize and accept that something some difficulty you will face, you know, things will happen not the way you want. The sooner you'll be able to move on, the sooner you'll be able to kind of accept it and live with it and work with it, kind of. It's important to understand why this is happening to you. Just trying to ask a question, trying to learn the lesson, even with COVID. I think trying to just stop and reflect to understand what you could, um, how could you benefit from this situation, you know. Because personally, I, I did my master's degree. I would never have done it ever because I would never waste my two years on the master's. But it gave me a postgraduate degree, which is really fantastic. It allows me to do things which I would never do before. So you just need to try to think how can you make things that, they are, that you have at the moment, how can you make these work in your uh, interests? With COVID, for example, I had quite a few hours free in, an, in a day now that... I didn't go to work and I decided I would deal with my social media pages, with my website. So I kind of directed my efforts into things which I would, wouldn't kind of necessarily do. So again, thankful I did it because I now have like things sorted, you know. And I, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Thank Kamara, thank you so much for joining me on the platform. I really find... 
you know, I found this conversation absolutely insightful and meaningful for so many. Thank you so much. It was really great chatting to you today. Thank you.